Musicals. What next? So where'd you go from there? I was in all the the dancing and okay. the musicals and the the cheerleading came in and I was just that kid that was doing every freaking activity known to mankind. Mm. I got every girl guide badge that you can possibly get mm. in three years when it's like supposed to be a four year thing. And I got like an award from the Queen of England and I got to meet <laughs> Prince Charles to give it to really? me. And like, it's ridiculous. Wild, what yeah. a ridiculous life. <laughs> like, and I remember they're like, you have to curtsy to him. I'm like, that's weird. That's weird. Does anyone else think it's weird that I have to curtsy to this dude because mm-hmm. he was born in that family? <laughs> and that's when I started getting in trouble. Um, <laughs> it all went downhill from there. Like probably Oof, like yeah. uh, class clown, obviously. Mm-hmm. And like most comics. And then, As I was getting towards, like, college age, it was, um, okay, you're Nicole, you have a scholarship for political science because I somehow got my way into this political high school program that I wasn't even allowed to audition for. They wouldn't let me because my school's like, fuck you, you're a cheerleader. This is for the (laughs) nerds. And I was like, all right, I'm going to find a loophole. And I found a loophole in how to enter to get to go to this political science kind of summit and represent my school and then get voted into being in parliament in Canada and found the loophole in Canada. Yeah. I'm Canadian. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I found the loophole, made my principal sign the form. And instead of making like my big essay and presentation, I did a top 10 list like David Letterman Mm -hmm. of the top 10 reasons you guys need me there. And that's all I submitted. And I got in. That's awesome. And then I ended up getting voted into like their junior prime minister role thing. And all the the high ups there were so mad because they were just like, she's so messy, we hate this. But then I ended up working for the federal government of Canada when I was 18. And then it was like, okay, I'm either going to go into political science, which I could already tell was bullshit, uh, or acting and dancing. And then at the last second... Are they really that different? No. Political science. (laughs) No. Acting and dancing. Well, this is when I saw comedy. (laughs) This is what I told my parents. They also were like, the same. Pol- politics, you can go into politics. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but they're all full of shit. Yeah. Pretending to be someone else, so why not do acting? Yeah. You can make yeah. more money. <laughs> like, way more money. Legally, at least. You know, like, whatever. Uh, yeah, so at the last second, I was already, like, going for dance and acting. And my friend had a college program. And I saw a comedy, performance and writing at Humber College, a two-year, like, undergrad program. And I was like, light bulb. Like, mm. I saw it. And I was like, I'm supposed to be a comedian. And I told my parents that, and they're like, no, you're not. You're not even funny. <laughs> and I was like, I think I am, though, because people are always laughing at me, so probably am. It's either that or something else. But we, yeah, either yeah. I'm funny looking or <laughs> so <laughs> whatever. And then they, my mom made me the deal that she would let me audition for it, and that she wanted to talk to the head of the program. And after I auditioned, they came out, and I ended up getting some kind of scholarship for it. But uh, it was cool because, like, our board of faculty was Eugene Levy and Mm. Alan Gutman, who helped start SCTV. And all of my teachers, my professors, were all pro comics. So the best guys from Second City were teaching me sketch. The people from um, Cirque du Soleil were teaching me clowning and Commedia dell'arte. And I was learning the history of comedy. And I was learning, like all these awesome things. I had stand-up class and my teacher was Larry Horowitz and he was so hard on me, but it was so good. It like still comes in handy now. And I got my degree in comedy. That's, that's what I did. That's <laughs> awesome. I didn't know that was a degree. Like that's the thing that they offer. Nobody knows. Yeah. I went to clown school, like legit <laughs> clown school. And it worked out pretty well. So that's yeah. funny. Okay. This Literally. Is a, a very, yeah. A very wide question, but okay. is there a key to being funny? Like, did you, is there like, after all that schooling and clown school and all that, like, yeah. it's like, oh, comedy is what? Tell like, the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Either in your actions, either, like physically, in the words, in the sketch. Uh, the biggest laughs are always saying something that mm. everybody else wants to say. Mm. They're too scared. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're all thinking. Yeah. And that's my favorite. That's like, that's why I do this. It's my favorite thing to do. It reminds me that Bill was it Bill Burr and at Red Rocks. He's got that Netflix. I think it was Netflix special where there wasn't actually the whole thing. There was nothing actually like it, it, the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. But nothing was funny. It was all just him saying serious things about COVID and about like I mean every thing that we will get in trouble for talking about. Yeah. Because like, but it was just like him saying it, and I was like, oh yeah, we all agree to that, and yeah. that makes it funny. Exactly. Like yeah. we were watching on the plane on the way here. It's like shit, piss, cock, cunk, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, George Carlin. <laughs> Those are the words you're not allowed to say. Yep. But everyone was saying them anyway. Yeah. So who are these people who said we can't do it? You know. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. All right. So clown, clown school, we have a comedy degree. Yeah, I'm a clown. Okay, I love that. Yeah. Uh, what came what next? 
Um, after that, right away, I started as an NBA cheerleader for the Raptors. Oh, no so way. right when I was like still coming out of college, and while I was in college, I was like two-time national dance team champion. Mm-hmm. Our story there is ridiculous. It's like a Disney movie of I was at a predominantly urban college, we'll call it, and this little white girl comes in to start the dance team. We ended up not having enough people to compete in the <laughs> national champions championships at the last second. I found a girl at the nightclub. I threw her in our team, taught her. We did this really weird, cool thing. One, ended up being a full varsity team the next year after I made a bet with the dean of my university that we were mm. going to win. We won, so it was a fully funded university team the next year, and it went into like a big dynasty that I got to go back and visit, which was pretty freaking cool. Mm. Um, and then after that, I went straight to the Raptors, which was super fun, and I ended up choreographing a bunch of award shows and... I love I love doing choreography. So a bunch of artists, even the song Cheerleader, I was saying that the yeah. other day too. Um, Omi, when that song was like number one on Billboard, yeah. I got to choreograph him for an award show. Oh, no way. It was so fun. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I just was doing all that stuff and right away stand up. I started doing stand up when I was 18. And then by the time I was done college, I was doing it like five to seven nights a week, every mm. single week, all the time. And got on a TV show in Canada. And then it just started going from there until car accident. 